Okay, so the UFC pre-fight press conference is just over. I watched it. Um, what do I think about it? Well, it was fun up until a certain point. Colby started on fire. He was dressed up as George Washington, I guess. He's mimicking the 1776 revolution going against the Redcoats, which is Leon Edwards. Um, that was fun. That was funny. He immediately also attacked uh, Layla. Layla Gary Machado. Uh, Ian's wife. <laughs> that was funny. He got into an altercation. Actually, Tony Ferguson started it, and then they ended up being friends at the end of the conversation. They're gonna they team America against the Red Coats, but yeah, he called him a bum. Six fights, losses in a row, and he said, "I'm more American than you." But they ended up as friends, so that was funny. Maybe it was all pre-rehearsed. Um, it. I'm sorry, I did not like Colby's comment. I mean, yeah, he tried to get into Leon's head and say whatever he had to say, and then he went to the lowest of the lowest. He says, I'll bring you to the seven layers of hell. Actually, he said hair, seven layer of hair, and then he said seven layer of hell, and you'll see what's up with your dad. Ooh, just a quick reminder, if you haven't, actually, if you don't know, uh, Leon's dad was murdered when he was 14 at a nightclub. That was a big shocker to a young 14-year-old. Uh, Leon Edwards, who, by the way, is Jamaican and lived in poverty in the worst parts of the, uh, I believe, London? Or, yeah, it's in England for sure, but it was, I think it's London. And uh, that's one of the reasons that he got into MMA, got out of that, you know, horrible environment. So, but, you know, you just, you know, he's said that he's deceased dad is in, in, in hell. And you'll see what's up with him when I knock you out. I feel like that's a little too low. That's a little too much, uncalled for. I get it. You're trying to provoke your, and you have, I feel like there's, yeah, you shouldn't go that low. I'm sorry. I don't like it. I really don't like it. I was really rooting for Colby up at this moment, but now I'm saying like, yeah, you know what? Maybe Leon. I don't think this is going to get Leon too emotional. If anything, this is going to give Leon a really good motivation to beat the heck out of Colby, which I'll talk about in a second. Please stay tuned for the rest of the video. I will make predictions for every fight. Every main event fight, plus, I thought they're going to bump it up to the main card, but they haven't. Maybe they will, last minute, I'm not sure. But Josh Emmett versus Bryce Mitchell is still a preacher prelim, but I'm going to predict that fight. Let's start off. Let's just jump into it. So, Josh Emmett was supposed to fight Giga. Giga Chikatse, who's a well-renowned stri striker. He was had a full camp prepared for that, and then, you know, just short notice, Giga got injured, uh, I think 10 days before the fight. And he was replaced by Bryce Mitchell, who is a high-level grappler. So, I will take into consideration also the age gap. So, we're talking Josh Emmett is the tail end of his career. He's 38 years of age. He had some success. He was very close to getting into the title conversation. Unfortunately, he lost. But he's still up there. He's a terrific fighter. Really good. He actually just started a YouTube channel. He's already thinking about the future. So, good for him. I like him. I like Josh Emmett. I don't have anything bad to say about him or his skills. It's just that I think, let me put it this way. I think this is a short notice fight for him. Justin is for Bryce Mitchell. You're prepared for a completely different type of fighter. Now it's 10 days notice. Oh, you're sure. He had a camp and everything. But I must say also that Bryce Mitchell's lifestyle is very important in all of this. Maybe he wasn't preparing for a fight specifically, but you know, he works at a farm. He was a uh, up building his barn he was 20 foot, foot up in the air on a ladder when he got the call for this fight he's in shape he trains there on his farm the whole time he's in really good shape he lives that kind of lifestyle he doesn't party he doesn't care about anything else he's, he's a good guy he's a little bit of an idiot but he's a good guy um so having said that i predict i predict that bryce mitchell will take this win yes i think he will submit josh emmett that's my first prediction Okay, moving on. Uh, the first and the first fight, I guess, of the main card will be Tony Ferguson uh, versus Patty Patrick Pimblett. Okay, so highly anticipated fight. We've been waiting for this for many, many months now. We already know Tony Ferguson trade with David Goggins. Uh, Patrick Pimblett last uh, fight was that controversial win over Jared Gordon. Now, important thing to mention is, yes, just as I and many others think that Patty should have lost that fight uh, via decision, it's also important to note that he got injured during that fight. After the first or second round, he I think his foot got broke, to my knowledge. Something got broken. So he was fighting compromised, and he still was able to make it very, very close. Okay, we think he lost 
he won by the judges. But you get the point. He's still very good. He's still a very good fighter. We don't know if he's ready to be a champion. But is he ready? The question now is only, is he ready to beat? Uh, Tony Ferguson is past his prime and is a six-fight losing streak. I say yes. I mean, in all honesty, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I think that he will beat him. And uh, even though I am rooting for Tony, I must say I'm rooting for Tony, so I'm not following my emotions here. I just, I mean, I like Tony just like many other people like Tony and the whole thing, and I wish he ends his career gracefully and he takes a win. But unfortunately, I, I don't see it happening. I just can't see Tony beating him in any way. I, I'm sad to say that, but I, I wish I'm wrong. I really wish I'm wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, and I make this video I was wrong on probably on Sunday or Saturday, or fuck it, on Saturday, I'll make a video right after the fights, and I, I hopefully I'll say I'm wrong, but I don't see this happening. I see this round one, round two, TKO or a submission by Patrick Bimlet on Tony Ferguson. Because we already, I mean, yeah, listening to Tony's interviews, I've changed my lifestyle and everything, and uh, where David Goggins took my, I mean, we heard this before. He tried six, previous six times, he said a similar thing. We know he's tough. He's just is not the same fighter. If this is the prime Tony Ferguson, I would have took him any day versus Patty Pimblett. But now in 2023, December, on the brink of 2024, I'm sorry, Tony loses again. And he should really call it quits. I say Patrick Pimblett by TKO or by submission. Round one or round two. Okay, next fight. Shaka Rockman over Stephen Thompson. Another fight where uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is a very likable guy. Um, even though, yeah, as Kobe said, he drives a bus considering he's a pedo and bringing, brings kids to his dojo. That was funny, but yeah, he, that was a joke and that's not too far. We already, we know that's not true. So, <laughs> but the, the one about Leon Edwards is totally wrong. But, okay, so Stephen Thunderboy Thompson is, I mean, he's an amazing fighter. And not only that, he's 40 years of age, but he looks much younger. He looks like he's in great shape. He doesn't look as damaged as for example, Tony Ferguson. However, he's still past his prime. He's not the best. This is not the best version of Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, no matter what. Um, yes, he did also want to fight strikers. He got shot cut. Who's everything? I mean, this guy has a 17 and 0 record. I think he has eight submissions, seven TKOs, or or vice versa. But you get the point. Shot cut can beat anybody with any way. He can grapple. He can strike. He can wrestle. He can submit. You get the point right? Stephen Thompson, we know on the ground, maybe he's a little bit underestimated on the ground. Maybe he really fought killers like, you know, Bilal, Gilbert. He lost to those guys. I mean, you know, you can't really give him too much hate, but he still has really good takedown defense. He's a really great striker. He's still very, very good. I don't think this is going to be, pardon me, I don't think this is going to be as easy fight for Shotcut as we, a lot of people think. Um, it's probably the toughest fight for Shotcut so far. But I I also don't see Steven Thompson beating Shavkat. I hope I'm wrong. But I also like Shavkat. i got to say, I'm rooting for both guys in this case. I'm not going to be sad whoever wins. But it's a very consequential fight, just like with Tony Ferguson. This might be the end of uh, Steven Thompson's career. Because he's hoping for a win here and getting a title shot in a, in a fight or two. And that's it. That's his last run. If, if, if it ends here, it's over. There's no way for him to get a title run. Um... And I think that's the end of his career. Just like Tony. Very consequential event. Very consequential fight. But I say Shavkat gets this done. Um, by decision. Or even finishes him in round two or round three. I don't see round one. But by round three. Round three I say submission. Maybe TKO. But yeah. Shavkat wins either way. That's my prediction. Okay. Next fight, Alexander Pantoja versus Brandon Real. Okay, so this is a rematch. Pantoja is defending the belt. It's two of the flyweights. Uh, finally, we don't get to see Figueredo and Brandon Moreno, right? I want to see Manuel Cape get into this conversation. Now, Pantoja is a champion for a reason. I mean, he did what he had to do. He beat Brandon Moreno. He's holding this title. He already beat Brandon Real once before. Can he do it again? I say no. I think Brandon Rail made some great adjustments. I think he's young, he's fresh, he's hungry, he wants that belt. I think that Brandon Rail gets it done. They both have very strong chins, so I don't know if he's going to be able to finish him or he's going to submit him, but he gets it done. I'm not going to say how it's hard. It's really hard to say that, but I say 
okay, I'm gonna if I'm gonna guess, he TKOs him, right? Or KOs him. Uh, Brandon Rell gets the title. And you. And you champion Brandon Rell of 2024 in the flyweight division. It's gonna be fun. Final event. Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington. Like I said, I was rooting for Colby. I wanted Colby to win. But after this comment, I think it's really low. Makes me also rethink a lot of things about Colby. He was I was I was under the impression that he's a nice guy, very humble guy, that is playing a character. Now, I don't know how you can justify playing a character, being a super villain and saying something like this. I think this transcends the character at this point. Makes me rethink also his relationship with Masvidal, but maybe I'm going too deep. Let's stick to the prediction, I guess. Um, having said so, either way, before this happened, it, it doesn't matter who I'm rooting for. Uh, my prediction would have been Leon Edwards. I say, and still, Leon Edwards, I think he's just... I think we're underestimating how good Leon Edwards really is. I think he's terrific. I think he's ever the, one of the best to ever do it. I think he will go down in history as one of the best Walter Waits to ever do it. After all, let me remind you, for the millionth time, he beat Kamaru Usman twice. Sure, he lost once before years ago. He had a chance to take the belt. He took it. He defended it versus Kamaru Usman. Also important to say is, yes, you can also say, oh, yeah, Kamaru was beating him up until the leg kick. And then in the second round, also, he had a lot of chances. Kamaru should have wrestled more. Okay, but he lost. Okay, that's that's what matters. The end result matters. It's also important if you want to go down that route. We can also say that uh, Kamaru Usman up until that point was barely. He had a 93% success rate of defense takedown. So he was defending takedowns left and right. Nobody could take down Liam. Speaking of, Colby Covington in two fights could not take him down. There was one really, really close one, but he did not officially take him down at all. He tried. Oh boy, he tried. But guess who took him down? Leon Edwards took down Kamaru Usman. So Kamaru Usman... I'm sorry, Leon Edwards... Leon Edwards' takedown defense and ground game is underestimated. His striking is absolutely world class. And I think that's where he's going to beat Colby. I think he's going to KO, TKO Colby. Round two, I think the cardio won't matter. I don't think they're going to go with the full five rounds. I think this gives him also extra motivation. But, you know, if Colby will, will, go, will try his best to get a takedown. Maybe he does take him down, but I don't see him holding down Leon Edwards. I think Leon Edwards will get up. Uh, he will get to the fence, he will somehow scramble up. And then if he keeps him at distance, he's going to completely shred Colby Covington. He doesn't have the striking tools to, to match Leon Edwards. I don't see it happening. Then if he gets too close in the clinch, Leon is deadly with those knees, man. He's going to obliterate him. So, yeah. Sorry to say, Colby. I was rooting for you, buddy. But up until this comment, this was pretty nasty. Honestly, I didn't like the comment at all. It was really nasty. So, Leon Edwards... We'll get it done. And honestly, I hope he gets it done at this point. Let me know what, you're, what you guys think about Colby's comment. Your official predictions. By the way, if you have a gambling problem, please call. Get help. Don't gamble. Um, but, you know, if you're gambling for fun, if you have a little bit on the side, if you don't have an addiction, sure, why not? You can listen to me, listen to some other folks. Um, I, I won't gamble, but if I were, they will be, this would be my picks, okay? Uh, let me know in the comment section. Give me a thumbs up for the algorithm if you liked the video. And don't forget to subscribe to Octa Cage MMA. I'll see you after the fights.